Hi guys and welcome. As part of DevOps, we get questions about Terraform state file all the time. To address that, we will be looking into this topic today. So first, let's take a look at today's agenda. These are what is a Terraform state file, why you need the state file, how to use state file in AWS. In this portion, we will have a demo. Advantages of the state file followed by conclusion. But before we begin, if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing and turn on the notification so you don't miss an update. Also, if you are interested in a certification program, check out the link in the description below. So let's start. So what is a state file? To understand what the state file is, you first have to remember how Terraform operates and what it does. So as you may already be familiar, Terraform is the infrastructure as a code tool that allows you to deploy infrastructure on your cloud. These may include but are not limited to AWS, GCP or Microsoft Azure. For this process, Terraform uses many files including a configuration file usually named main.tf in most cases, the state file, provider file and instance file. For this portion, we will be focusing on terraform.tf state file. This is the Terraform state file and it holds the information about the deployed infrastructure of an enterprise. Essentially, Terraform state file remembers and records what has been deployed on the cloud and whenever it is required to make certain changes to the IT infrastructure, Terraform will refer to the state file to ensure proper resource management, allowing Terraform to allocate real world resources using the configuration file which is provided in the code format. Now, let's understand about the significance of state file and why you need it. To understand the need, let us take an example. Suppose we have three servers running on our AWS and we want to change that to reach a total of five servers. Now, how we can achieve the desired state of having five servers on the cloud? To do this, the user uses Terraform. Terraform refers to the state file to know what already exists on AWS. It sees that there are three servers already deployed. So Terraform adds two more and achieves the desired state. Now let's look at the flip side to really understand what would it be like without the state file. So let's just assume that the state file is lost or it is deleted. Maybe for some reason Terraform can't access it. Now let's see what will happen in that case. In this case, user again connects with Terraform and tells it to deploy five servers. But this time, Terraform doesn't know what has already been deployed because that information is stored in the state file. And this time, Terraform can't find it. So, Terraform ends up adding five servers to the AWS without the knowledge that three servers were already on the cloud. This is not what the desired state was. And this is what being stateless means. The main purpose of the state file is to keep Terraform stateful. Stateful in this context means that it will keep track of everything in your environment. So if you later need to make specific changes such as adding or deleting anything, Terraform will know what it built previously and change accordingly using the state file. In this manner, it helps Terraform to manage and allocate resources properly and avoids it from becoming a stateless system. Stateless means its inability to recall the existing configuration of the infrastructure. Let's take another example to understand things much better. Suppose a manager tells his team of two developers to make changes to the existing infrastructure. There are two servers already deployed on AWS. But the business requirement is to have a total of five servers. So three servers needs to be added and manager tells his team of two developers to reach the business requirement. For this case, we will assume that both developers have taken the initiative of updating the infrastructure. Let's see how this plays out. The first developer wants to add three servers. Meanwhile, the other developer is doing the same. Both developers are connecting with Terraform to update AWS, which currently has two servers. So 
the first developer ends up adding three servers to the AWS, resulting in five servers. The other developer also does the same thing by adding three servers. This results in a total of eight servers on the AWS, whereas the requirement was to have only five servers. This problem is solved using remote state file storage and locking mechanisms, which helps avoid these issues. We will understand this even more moving forward. Now, let's move on to the demo part and see how we can use the state file in AWS. This demo will look at the problem we discussed about before. So again, we have two developers who wants to use Terraform to make changes to the infrastructure. The current state is that two servers are running on AWS. Do note that both developers are using locally stored state file. What this means is that both developers have a blueprint stored on their local devices with the current state of AWS, which has two servers. So in this case, the first developer wants to update to reach the desired state. He does this by adding three servers using Terraform to reach the desired state. Now, second developer comes in and adds three servers. This is because he has no clue that AWS has already been updated by someone else and this results in having a total of eight instances running. This is why state files when used locally can result in severe issues. Let me show you how this plays out. Here we have two developers named user A and user B. Let's look at their configuration file. So we open this file. So as we can see, we should have two instances running on AWS. Let's verify this in EC2. As we can see, we indeed have two instances running. So once again, according to the example, we need to reach a desired state of five. To do this, we will change the count value from two to five, since two plus three equals five. Now let's save this file and let's go ahead and run Terraform apply. So from the user a command line, I run terraform apply. Now that we get a confirmation message that apply was completed and three resources have been added. Let's verify what EC2 has. Let's hit refresh. So we have reached a total of five instances, which was the business requirement. Now, let's check second developer's configuration file and make similar changes. Now, I save this file and again, I run the Terraform apply. Now, from the user B side, I'll run Terraform apply. Again, we get a confirmation message saying three resources have been added. So, let's verify in EC2. Hit refresh. As you can see, there are now eight instances running and this wasn't the business requirement. Let's see what can be done to resolve this. The previous issues are resolved by storing state file on the cloud. For this, we will use some of the AWS features. First, we will create S3 bucket, which will be used for storing the state file data. Second, we enable the locking mechanism by using DynamoDB that will store metadata to aid locking features. This ensures that only one person can make changes to AWS at a time. After this, we just need to configure Terraform and then we can resolve the issues in the previous example. After doing these changes, the situation will play out differently. Let's understand. We still have two developers wanting to make same changes. So, First developer connects with the remote state file stored in S3. The developer then goes ahead and makes the changes to the infrastructure by acquiring a state lock using DynamoDB. After this, Terraform applies the changes to the infrastructure. During this entire time, the other developer can't make any changes to the infrastructure because the first developer is still in the process of making changes. Hence, the developer with the lock gets the rights to change the infrastructure and other cannot make the changes during the same time. Let's see how this works. 
here we have six developer if we assume that this developer wanted to update the infrastructure first he would get a lock and obtain the state file as long as this developer has the lock none of the other developers will be able to make any changes the other developer can only make changes once this developer finishes updating and releases the lock to the s3 now we will see the example of locking as well in our demo to explain this so let's go ahead here we have user c and user d who will be using state file stored remotely let's look at the configuration file and see the current state of the infrastructure as you can see we still have the count value set to 2 but let me explain to you what this above code means this is the backend configuration this tells terraform how to operate here we have defined the bucket name key region and dynamo db name the bucket name is the s3 bucket that you create key is the path where you store the state file region is the region of the bucket and dynamo db table is the name of the table that we use for locking purposes here I will show you how to create the S3 bucket and Dynamo DB table so that you can feed that information in here. So let's start. First, you go to your S3. As you can see, I have a few buckets set up over here. So let me show you how you can create your own bucket. So click this button here and then give your bucket a very specific and unique name. Here, you have to enable work at versioning and then enable the encryption. Afterwards, just create this button. And now, all you need to do is just feed the name of this into your code. And this is the backend configuration and this is what you will be editing out. Now, let's see how you can create your DynamoDB table. So, to do that, you click this. Now, go to tables, click create table and give it a proper name. For the partition key, you have to use lock ID. Afterwards, just create this. Now, all you need to do is copy this, the name of the table that you just created and feed it into the code here. This backend configuration remains the same for the most part. Since I have already created the bucket and the table, I will be using these two because they have already been configured. So, for the sake of demonstration purposes, we will be using the existing code without modifying the backend. So, let's see how the situation plays out. First, let's verify how many instances do we have because it says here that we, we should be having total of two instances running. So, let's verify this. Now that we have confirmation, we change the count from 2 to 5. Similar to our previous example, this should also be self-explanatory. So I save the file and from the user C side, I run Terraform apply. As you can see, it says here acquiring state lock, meaning it is making sure that only user C can have access and none other user can make any changes during this process. While this is running, I can also show you that when user C is running a supply command, user D won't be able to make any changes as user D won't be able to acquire a lock. Let me show you. As you can see, user D was not able to acquire the lock and got an error message. Here on the C side, it is now releasing the state lock and now we get a confirmation message saying that three resources have been added. Let's verify this in EC2. So, we have 5 instances running, which was the desired output. Now, let's go to user D side and try to play out the same scenario by again changing the count from 2 to 5. Now, I save this file and I run Terraform apply from the user D side. Now that the user D is in the process of acquiring the state lock, the ideal condition would be to have only 5 instances running. 
because we used a remote state file this time. So the user D should get notified that the infrastructure already matches the configuration. So we get a message saying no changes were made and our infrastructure matches the configuration. So again, let's verify this in EC2. As you can see, we don't end up making any changes. This is what we wanted all along and the number of instances is still 5 which means we were successful. Now that is over, let's move on to the other part of this session. Advantages of Terraform state file. Terraform maintains a list of dependencies and stores it in the state file. Thus, it can deal with dependencies that are not existing in the current configuration. It is possible to skip refresh even when configuration changes are made. Only particular repos can be refreshed instead of everything and this improves performance significantly. It is possible to enable logging to identify invalid access and take appropriate measures to counter them. State file can track version of the deployed configuration. The state file is remotely stored and shared. So collaboration can be quite simple without overwriting. Conclusion We learned a lot about Terraform state file today. About how the state file acts as a blueprint, how the state file represents the current state of the deployed environment, the importance of having a remote state file, and how proper provisioning of infrastructure is done with the state file, how locking mechanisms helps avoid inconsistencies and make sure that only one person is able to make changes at a time to the required infrastructure. And that's it. I hope you got to understand a little bit more about Terraform state file now. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!